All right, Facebook Live, here we are once again. Our Christian Minson at the helm, Rhythmy Life Advancement Center, coming to you live today, sunny and rainy at the same time. Uh, Costa Rica weather never fails to create a marvelous atmosphere. Here we are just shooting the bull. If you get on this recording, know that you can skip to about four minutes in before we get started really with the content. So as you arrive, say hi, tell me who you are. Stephanie, Stephanie is and on, good to see you. Give all, hey, he's on too. Lisa, hello. Lisa's the first to give me a hand wave. Claudia, how are you doing today? Joining, let me know where you're from. Start getting used to using the old, what do you call those, um, likes and heart buttons there. Test them out for me so that you can give me some real-time feedback. Maiku is coming, or Maiku's here. She's coming as uh, Maiku and Ingla in March. Already reconnection issues. Uh, Lisa, hello from Michigan. Maureen, uh, Maiku, Finland loves you. Ah, I love Finland. Um, Scandinavia is close to my heart, having been, uh, having lived in Oslo, Norway for three years of my life. It's one of the many fun facts about me. You get to know me. Uh, there's many fun facts. Uh, Penny, hey there, Penny. And uh, let's see who else, who else coming on? So a little slow on the uptake today, but we'll just hang out here. I'll let you know that, uh, you know, I invite everybody to participate and that's why I try to get you um, typing in, trying to get you using the likes and uh, hearts and the little mad icons and everything if you, uh, so that we can have a conversation here rather than me. If you have topics you want me to talk about, please feel free to uh, suggest them in the, the chat bar. You can also friend me personally on Facebook, R. Christian Minson. But if you do, remember to put a message in with that friend request. I don't know why people don't do that anyway. Um, you know, I mean, do you friend people that you don't know or that? Even if you do know them, it's nice to say, hey, I'd love to be friends with you rather than just showing up on your board. But uh, maybe I'm not hip to Facebook etiquette. Uh, so keep on going. If anybody's coming on in, oh, there's a few more. Claudia, hi. Maiku, March 10th through 17th. Maiku and Ingla are coming. Our Finnish animal... Uh, uh, communicators and they teach you uh, something about communicating with animals and it's a lot of fun so they'll be here and, and she's on Valeria, Valer, Valeria from Brazil was here a while back so far Rose Encinas uh, hey from Denver Colorado is that your name in Encinas huh? uh, I used to live in Encinitas in Italy. So Rose, friend me, so that you'll know next time I'm coming back to do a breath workshop or something. Penny from Northern Vermont, Lisa, funny, I was just watching Candice's YouTube and then I popped up. Well, because me and Candice are always uh, fighting for, uh, fighting to be in front. But um, no, I love her, and um, what, a, what a beautiful soul. One of the many beautiful souls here at Rhythmia. All right, and we're at four minutes and 30 seconds, so I'm just going to get started after I say hi to Shelly and hi to Sven. Welcome, everybody. My name is R. Christian Minson. I am your catalyst for transformation and awakening here at Rhythmia Life Advancement Center, Guanacaste, Costa Rica. I direct the breathwork program here. I've been a 
a breathwork trainer and facilitator for the last 12 years. Prior to that, I was a monk. I lived the monastic life for 10 years. Another fun fact about me. Uh, I'm a speaker and author. I brought one of my books today, Align, Expand, and Succeed. I contributed that book. There's a number of authors in there. Shifting the Paradigm of Entrepreneurial Success. It's about merging the field of consciousness and business. Something that people who come here start getting interested in, especially as they get downloads that they need to do something different with their lives. So anyway, I'm here today talking about faith, have faith, uh, and uh, really the role of faith in our lives. Now, you know, I mentioned I was a monk and as a breath worker and all that. I really, my whole perspective is colored from the, the spiritual angle. Uh, the whole belief that we are spiritual beings having a physical experience, not physical beings having a momentary or temporary spiritual awakening every once in a while. So the perspective that I give you really always comes from that foundation, that we really are spirit beings. And so, you know, we're going to talk about the role of faith in our lives as spirit beings and, and why, why it's so important. It, you know, you look around today chaotic uh, we you know there's calamities going on there's uh, public figures uh, uh, political figures wreaking havoc on our our uh, our sanity and on our um, our uh, our calmness uh, we you know things are often so tumultuous that we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And we need to understand a perspective that's going to help you to make it through those dark times uh, without really falling apart. And I think that's, um, that's a big reason why people come to Rhythmia is they're, they're really trying to, trying to see the light, trying to get a sense that uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And that's really, in a nutshell, what faith is all about, understanding that light is there. Um, hi, Tom. Hi, Jennifer. And uh, Tim. Hi, Tim. And uh, Rose said hi. Yay for, for being in Denver once in a while. All right. So I'll also say why. Why is faith so important? Coming from my monastic background, it, you know, I, I was a monk for 10 years and Really, during those 10 years, dove deep into the spiritual life. Four and a half hours a day of meditation on average, studying every day, introspecting every day, uh, living a life of service, uh, completely giving up all, uh, you know, all attachments, all possessions, all this. You know, we didn't work for money. It, uh, and during that life, during that 10 years of my life, was really some of the calmest, most tranquil, uh, just my whole attitude was very even-minded and, and, and peaceful. Of course, that's what you'd expect from a monk, right? Uh, that, that's what we were striving to cultivate on this spiritual path. So uh, you know, when I left the order, and I've talked about that in other Facebook Lives, why and all that, but when I left, I can remember one day I was sitting in my room and I was feeling a little anxious and, and recognizing that anxiety was creeping back into my life uh, after, after having been out for some number of months. And I was really like, you know, why am I feeling this anxiety now? that I really didn't feel when I was in the, the uh, you know, behind the gates, so to speak. And when I, I said, and more deeply I went, I said, what was it about that time uh, in the order, uh, it, behind those gates, that was different? What was the, what was the ingredient that I could extract from that period of my life and continue to leave, live, continue to live in calmness, in peacefulness, in a, a feeling of, of well-being and even-mindedness. 
And when I really dug deep and got down into it, the answer was faith. Imagine that, subject for today. The, that this, this faith that I had uh, in the, you know, in the order, I could take out into my life and continue to have it. And as long as I held on to that faith, then no matter how much life rocked my boat or the winds of change buffeted me, I could stay on an even keel. And so this is really, again, why I felt like that, you know, above all, this is really the cornerstone of a spiritual life, the cornerstone of a healthy, happy, uh, balanced life is to have faith. And so what is faith then? What are we really talking about? You know, faith is a characteristic of our spirit. I mentioned again early that we're spiritual beings having this physical experience. So faith is really a drawing out of our relationship to that of our spirit, you know, bringing our spirit to the forefront. Um, it's a trust that there's a larger mechanism at work, right? So, um, you know, again, obviously I came from a more spiritual background where there is a belief. Most, most people that come to Rhythmia have some kind of belief in a higher power. That doesn't necessarily mean a little white haired figure up in the sky on a throne uh, directing the show here but that there is some sort of intelligence, some sort of alignment that, that brings uh, life into existence and keeps it rolling in a relatively harmonious manner, even though we might not uh, perceive that if we were to look at any small uh, frame of reference of any incidents happening on this planet these days. So it's really a belief Faith comes from a belief that the universe is conspiring in your favor. All right, think about that for a minute. The universe is conspiring in your favor, meaning that everything that happens is for your higher good. So this gets into what's the purpose of life. And I talked about that in a, in a past Facebook Live, um, which you can find both in Rhythmia's archives of, of videos um, on Facebook as well as in the Rhythmia YouTube page. We upload all of them to YouTube. Um, the purpose of life is really evolution. Purpose of life is our ascension. Um, Panache Desai is here this week and uh, so some of the things uh, I'll be saying come from uh, what he, uh, you know, what he's been teaching and you know, he said our, the purpose of our life is our, our ascension. And I use the term our evolution, that we're continually growing, we're continually evolving. And as, uh, as that, using that frame of reference as the purpose of our lives, then all of our experiences become lessons to support that evolution. Think about, um, you know, when you were in school, uh, you know, when you were in third grade, uh, it was fourth grade lessons seemed so hard and so, so difficult. You had to go through the lessons of third grade to reach the intelligence that would allow you to then learn those fourth grade lessons, right? So we're, we're constantly evolving and all of our experiences are designed to give us the lessons to help us move to higher and higher states of consciousness to ultimately reach a state of divine bliss, a state of divine union with our higher self. We call that self-realization, we call it nirvana, we call that samadhi in uh, Sanskrit. Uh, so um, this is the purpose of life and faith then is an understanding that life, no matter what it throws at you, is really helping you rather than hurting you, okay? So, with that being said, faith also isn't just a blind trust. Now, imagine if you are walking down the middle of a highway, cars are 
coming right at you and you say, well, I'm doing this because I have faith. I have faith. The cars aren't going to hit me. Well, that's just stupidity, right? Um, you're likely going to get hit and, uh, you know, no amount of faith in the world uh, is worth you know, putting your life at, at risk. So we have to play our part. Faith comes hand in hand with intelligence. And now we may not have had that intelligence at one time in our lives. And then, you know, we, we end up having a rocky experience. But that rocky experience ultimately gives us that intelligence, which then, if we're evolving, we can apply that intelligence to future experiences in our lives so we can avoid those, um, those mistakes. All right. Hi, Tiffany. Hey, good afternoon to you. Hi, Sheila. Mary. Sheila, yeah, good. Some people have joined on. Meg McGill. And uh, welcome. Talk about faith and the role of faith in our lives. So how do we... How do we play this faith game? How do we, how can we really develop faith? And, and Panash Desai, who's here this week, said, you know, in the simplest form, just uh, this resonates with me, ultimately, because, you know, that's a that's whole spiritual perspective. That is essentially the per spiritual perspective. We are divine consciousness, come down to, into physical form to learn lessons to help us um, reunite with that divine consciousness once again. The purpose of that, uh, much larger than the scope of this, uh, this talk today, maybe we'll get into that in the future. But um, when we're talking about how to develop faith, one is use your own experience. Now, remember back into your life for a moment. Just think back all of the experiences in your life. And many of us have had difficult experiences. We've had challenges. We've had trials. We've had abuse. We've had, you know, just negativity thrown at us. But look at where you are today. You're still here. You're still alive. You're still thriving. Life threw this stuff at you. Again, if we see it from the right perspective, to help you along, you survived it. You managed to be where you are today despite all of these things. So your experience in of itself, even if it was hard, even if it was dark, helped. Uh, you, you were helped through those experiences to get you to where you are today. Uh, you know, you've been taken care of. Now, some of you may say, well, you know, what about those dark times? What, um, you know, that, that wasn't very pleasant. I didn't feel very taken care of then. And, you know, consider what, you know, what the essence of the darkness is that you don't like is that you were suffering. During those times, you felt a certain sense of suffering. And what causes that suffering? Suffering is caused primarily by resistance, resistance to what is. Um, and this, again, you know, falls so nicely that Panash Desai was talking about this yesterday, just a matter of fact, so I was like scribbling down notes saying this would be, this works perfectly in alignment with uh, what I wanted to say about faith today. Um, you know, so resistance is what causes suffering. So when there is no resistance, there is no suffering. Holding on to a version of life other than what is is what causes suffering. So again, you're in, you know, you're in an abusive relationship, and you know you're, uh, you are holding on to an idea that it shouldn't be that way. That. Um, that as much is causing the, the suffering of the situation, uh, I would even say more than the abuse itself. Now, um, you know, I don't, uh, I, I don't advocate anybody staying in an abusive relationship, but when you look back in your life and you see like where you did, 
It's likely because you are holding on to this idea that it could be different or it should be different. And as a result, uh, you were continually uh, perpetuating uh, the suffering because it wasn't that way. It was abusive and it, it wasn't in your highest interest. Finally, somewhere along the line, that, that relationship taught you that it was time to get out of that, to, that, you know, to, to uh, muster up your strength, muster up your willpower, and, and make a change. And therein is the lesson. But the suffering came from the resistance to the, uh, the situation in the first place. If you, if you didn't resist, you would have um, you know, possibly learned that lesson a lot quicker. As a friend of mine just was saying, if you know, we're to talk about relationships, if somebody walks in your relationship, let them walk. You know, don't try to don't try to hold on to them or look at look for the signs that are saying this person is not good for me. And instead of ignoring them, like act on those signs. So uh, let's see. Yes, sir. LA, coming closer to meet you. Hi from LA. Come closer to meet you all. Good. In May. Good, Gail. So it it's a difficult. You know, um, we actually spent a lot of time going back and forth a little bit about this in uh, class yesterday because, you know, it's a difficult concept for people to grasp how their, how their trials were actually good for, for you or, you know, at the very least were, were not the main cause of your suffering but that your, your resistance really is. Um, so, so the idea is to align with what's happening. You align with faith, faith that you know, um, faith that you can trust your intuition to, to guide you. And again, read the signs. So if you're, if you're seeing signs that somebody is not good for you in, in this, uh, these examples, then act on those signs. Don't just have that blind, blind faith, as they say, where, oh, this person is acting out of integrity but I'm going to have faith that this whole thing is going to work out. You know, that's, that's what we call the blind faith. So, but when you recognize the perfection of in whatever happens, whatever happened in your life, then you're truly free. So as you look back, you know, that stuff happened, the darkness, the abuse, the, the trials, the tribulations, it all happened. Um, and you've got two choices now. You can continue to look back on it and dwell on how bad it was and how it shouldn't have been that way and you know what you could have done differently and all that. And all that just perpetuates the pain and suffering. Or you can recognize the perfection in all that happened, that everything that happened was to push you along the road of evolution and whether you you got pushed a little bit or you, you've been pushed a lot on that uh, upward climb that it was all perfect in uh, helping you to see, uh, see a little bit better, a little bit clearer in life. And then when you recognize that, you are free. As long as you hold on to it shouldn't have been, this, uh, you know, why, oh, why me? Why did it happen? Uh, you stay locked in this um, in this perpetual suffering. So it's it's really in your best interest to recognize that it that there was a perfection in the whole um, in that whole mechanism. So um, you know these things happened. So move on. You know they happened. If you can't consider them perfect, at least move on. So you don't need to color your, your future with those experiences. Learn from that experience so you don't have to repeat the future, but don't um, keep dragging misery into, into the future. Um, you're helping so many people. Thanks, Mary. Wonderful to receive your knowledge. Thanks, Sherry. Uh, Romania, Ramona from Romania, beautiful. Brenda. Why life in the past just like life for today? Um, I think you say, why live in the past? Just live for today as 
the past you can't change. And beautifully put, Brenda, that's, um, that's uh, essentially the <laughs> divine confluence, the point I was going to make next. Stay present. You know, much of what bothers us are projections, future projections of based on the past. So some past happened and now we keep, we keep worrying or have anxiety about the future because we're just projecting the past into it as if we have no choice or no ability to change or to evolve to navigate a different future. So the best way to navigate a different future is to live in the present, to stay present to life. And if you can really stay present to what is in the moment, it's amazing. The moment brings you the next clue, the next uh, as another friend of mine used to say, the next breadcrumb, follow the breadcrumb trails. And you find that breadcrumb, it takes you another step forward. You sneak around, you find the next breadcrumb, that takes you on to the next step. And if you, if you take the time, what the breadcrumbs really are is your intuition guiding you on step by step. And even if you're wrong, even if your intuition sometimes isn't quite on, if you're staying present to what is, you will find out pretty quickly that you've taken an attack that wasn't right, and then you can correct your course before getting too far off. If, you, if you're not present, you find yourself, and you, you uh, think you're trusting your intuition, you go off, and all of a sudden, weeks, months, years later, you find yourself way off course, and you're like, how did I get here? It's because you, you weren't staying present to your life and the clues that life was giving you on how to take the next step, which direction to take. All right, so, man, hello. My kids keep throwing the past in my past face. I keep saying live for today as one day at a time. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard lesson. It's, it's a hard enough lesson for us to learn when we want to learn it let alone uh, trying to get others to learn it. And, um, you know, uh, encourage them by, encourage, yeah, just keep encouraging them to live in the present by giving the carrot of, of happiness, that their happiness can be found if they stay in that present. And they will, they will find and reconcile, uh, they'll find the solutions to the past and reconcile the past if they stay present. Um, so, in the, I have my own story here uh, in a relationship that I was in. I, it was, it was a budding relationship and I was, you know, it was very exciting, you know, how uh, relationships begin. They, you know, there's this, this energy, the, uh, all of the, the fun and the, what they call the honeymoon period a lot of times. And, uh, but in that, then I started to think about the future. So, so here we are in the present. It's all, it's all good. It's all, you know, exciting and all that. I start thinking about the future and like, what ifs? What if I do this wrong? Or what if, you know, what if she doesn't like this or, or you know, things like that. And uh, I brought that energy into the relationship and it was such a, a learning experience for me because then my, my fears, my what ifs sparked her fears and her what ifs. And we got into this downward spiral that um, we didn't get out of for many hours. And eventually, uh, I don't even know how we decided to like, take a break and uh, revisit it the next morning. And fortunately, the next morning, we, we both said, you know, this is, uh, this is kind of ridiculous. I didn't like how, um, you, you know, how I behaved. She didn't like how she behaved and said, you know, that let's just focus on the present, focus on what's here, and the future will take care of itself. Um, my spiritual teacher, uh, Paramahansa Yogananda, said, Live each present moment fully 
and the future will take care of itself. Fully enjoy the wonder and beauty of each instant. Live each present moment completely and the future will take care of itself. Imagine that. If we could just live each present moment completely, the future unfolds uh, just as I was talking about earlier. Live each present moment. Uh, enjoy the wonder and beauty of each present moment. And then life becomes a beautiful experience. Life, uh, you, you see that the present moment, even if it's dealing you a slap across the face, is a beautiful thing because that slap, again, isn't, isn't to bring misery into your life. It's to say, wake up, you're going the wrong way. And we've tried to tell you in a quiet whisper, but you're not listening, so we've got to give you this slap so you can wake up so you don't go too far off. So even if life deals you that and you're present to it, you can enjoy it as the wonder and beauty of life really having your back. And, uh, you know, most of, the, uh, most of the trials and tribulations we get into is because we haven't, uh, haven't paid attention to life's warning signs. Uh, let's see. To me, when people live in the past... All it makes people fight. Exactly. Um, I hear you out. I've been there, done that. <laughs> I wasn't the fight with my girl. Let's see. I was in the fight with my girl, and the next day she came over, and what you just said, that's just what happened. Yeah, well, there you go. Um, my experience is not unique. This is pretty much the drama of life. Uh, is you know perpetually projecting the past i mean projecting into the future based on our our pains and sufferings in the past we dredge the pain and suffering of the past into the future completely bypassing the present and then we're not even relating to each other right we're because we're we're actually relating to somebody who perpetuated something that happened to us in the past and you know and then we're projecting that in the future so we're not even consciously connected to the actual person that we're we're in conflict with in the present if we were we'd see that's a whole unique situation it's a whole unique person whole unique set of circumstances and we can address those if we stay present to them but if we're just projecting we're actually putting imaginary circumstances overlaid onto the reality of the situation and then nobody's winning because because the other person in the in the fight in the argument whatever is is like what are you talking about you know this isn't this isn't the reality of the situation and the, to compound it they're probably doing the same thing so you're going well what are you talking about this isn't the reality of the situation so nobody's living in reality in that moment and everything just spirals out of control and you know I admit it, it happens to myself as well. Uh, and, you know, you should never get down on yourself for, for making those mistakes. Um, just recognize them and use them to move forward. That's, that is the whole evolution of life. That's the whole, uh, the whole uh, beauty of forgiveness, which is another topic I've talked about on, on these Facebook Lives. There's a lot, of, a lot of material in these things to help you navigate through the rocky roads of, of life's territory. Um, but to be able to do so and still maintain a smile on your face and uh, a relaxed attitude, then you know that ultimately everything's going to be all right. Consider the lilies that neither they spin or toil. Yeah, Tom bringing a biblical passage into our, our midst and really to say that uh, from, from that Christian perspective that God is looking out for us. If he wouldn't, you know, uh, if he takes care of a sparrow, you know, think how much more important we are as, as children of the divine, you know, made in the divine image that we wouldn't be taken care of as well. Um, so, uh, let's see. Taking our cues from nature. Uh, Brenda, I miss you as I was not seeing my kids much and it was hurting them a lot. Yeah. Jenny, 
just joined. Hey, Jenny, good to see you there. All right, so the other thing, we're still talking about how to uh, navigate faith, and I always tend to bring things around to a special technique that I've been teaching for years and years, breath work. Breath work is dealing with our breath, which is dealing with our life force energy. And within that, as, as we learn to bring in abundant amounts of life force energy into our being, we start to align with the intelligence of that life force. And that intelligence is our guiding force. That intelligence helps us to stay present. The whole process of breath work helps us to stay present. Then that intelligence bubbles up and that is our guide. And when we truly follow that divine intelligence, our lives move in the right direction. I, um, you know, I left the monastic life following that divine intelligence. Uh, if I had followed my uh, mental intelligence, you know, my intellectual intelligence, I'd still be in the monastic order, and I'd probably be struggling and maybe even miserable because that wasn't my place. Uh, paradoxically, the divine intelligence took me out of that environment so that I could uh, learn lessons that I personally needed to learn uh, and continue to grow and evolve out here in, uh, in the worldly side of, of the fence. And so I get to be here and share with all of you each week, which um, I appreciate because uh, I'm a very um, connective type person and I, I like having that interpersonal connection uh, which wasn't so present in, in my monastic lifestyle so Linda's saying yes faith is essential thanks for breathwork classes last week life changing experience so and uh, that's what people report week after week we do the breathwork here at Rhythmia uh, <clears throat> to introduce you to the week and we do the breath work at the end of the week to help you wrap up your whole experience and <clears throat> leave you with something that you can take with you. Why can you take it with you? Because you take it with you everywhere you go, right? Wherever you go, you can breathe. You can spend five minutes sitting anywhere and just get into a good rhythmic breath uh, pattern and be able to uh, be able to get more present receive the next breadcrumb and move on your life in a happy harmonious way all the time having faith that you know that the next step will come if you just stay the course do your breath work keep um, keep looking for those breadcrumbs so you know really to to wrap up what if what if you were to bring more faith into your life, to practice faith in all aspects of your life, your, your relationships, your, your work, your, um, you know, your personal aspirations and endeavors, uh, whatever it is, think, if you had more faith, how much worry would you release? How much more smoothly would your life go on a day-to-day -day basis? You know, how much more calmness uh, and just, joy of being present you know, how much more would you be able to be present to the wonders and beauty that life brings you in each present moment so that's what i want to leave you with today uh you guys have been commenting i love uh i love it when whatever i say sparks some conversation and sparks you know sparks some inspiration uh sometimes it sparks questions if you have questions, I'm always willing to answer. Uh, as well, I'm always willing to consider topics that are important to all of you out there. Uh, these topics really are, you know, are the, the new curriculum for a happy, healthy life. Uh, you know, we've been through school. We learned, you know, we learned the uh, yes, sir, and the one, two, threes, and ABCs. But, you know, this is... Uh, this is real life school, and uh, Rhythmia is like real life crash course school, you, you know, the intensive. You get in there, you live. Um, I've been here a year now, and all of those who 
who work here joke that, you know, one week arrhythmia is like one month of, of life uh, compacted into that week. So if I think about that, I've been here 52 weeks, which means 52 months, which is about four years. So uh, the real feel, you know, weather always goes, you know, it's 79 degrees, but real feel is 85. Uh, the real feel for being here a year is four years. So, uh, and the real feel, if you come for a week, is uh, often a month or for many people, it feels like a lifetime that you're here because uh, many people are reborn, uh, literally reborn in this uh, program. Uh, they have an ego death. They, they let go of who they were and what you've been dragging along with you all this time literally uh, transform and come out as a new person with a new lease on life. Uh, so if you've got old issues dogging you, um, I, I invite you to, to think about Rhythmia. The number's up above. You can call them, and they're happy to, to discuss things with you. If you've got questions, concerns, whatever, if you don't listen, if that's something that off. We uh, do a breathwork week here every once in a while. Uh, the next one's coming up in January, the, the third week in January, when Michael Beckwith, the Reverend Michael Beckwith, will be our guest presenter for that week. And uh, every ceremony we do during that week is a breathwork ceremony. So you don't have to worry about uh, doing that plant medicine if either you're, you're a little frightened by it or you can't do it medically, or, or you can't do it because you're on medications or something like that, or you just, or you're morally opposed to it, but you still want that transformational experience. People who come here every week, I will ask them tonight, uh, in fact, you know, who, uh, who felt like their breathwork experience was as powerful as their plant medicine experience, and at least half the room uh, raises their hands. And then when I ask how many people think their breathwork experience was even more powerful than their plant medicine experience, at least a handful, half a dozen will always raise their hand. So just know why I bring that up is that if you're concerned about plant medicine and you don't want to do it, you can still have the Rhythmia experience, the 92% um, success rate uh, for, for getting your miracle, for getting what you came here for. And if you want to know the truth, uh, in the two breathwork weeks that we've done so far, we've actually had a hundred percent success rate. So a hundred people, hundred percent of the people who've come here during breathwork week have left saying that they got what they came for. So right now we even got a better miracle rate with the breathwork than the, the plant medicine. So whether you come in for plant medicine or breathwork, you're going to get breathwork at least at the beginning and the end of the week. Uh, so, so, oh, some new comments. Meg, so excited to see you again. 11-11, beautiful. That's a good time to be here. Um, Lori saying hi from Vegas, SoCal, going to see Tina. All right, say hi to Kat for me. Uh, haven't spoken to her since she was here. So uh, love to love to have you pass on the love and um, say say I miss her and Meg say it's true it is true um, I'll be practicing the breath every week, day of my life thank you that's Linda who was just here and that's really what I want for you too you learn it come here and learn it go home and use it for the rest of your life life is uh, you know life just begins. You know, your experience of that's what, um, that's where all the joy and the, the true value of your experience here comes in your everyday life, right? That's, that's where you have to meet your mind and that's where you have to meet your heart. And that's where you have to um, meet your challenges with a, a smile and that faith that we were talking about. So with that, uh, looks like um, Lori said, will do. Yeah, thanks uh, for, for passing on the word to Kat. So 
on that, R. Christian Minson signing off. If you want to uh, friend me on Facebook, feel free, R, letter R, Christian Minson. Uh, and if you do, always include a message, a Facebook message that says, I saw you on Rhythmia Live. Let's be friends. If you don't send me that message, it's likely that um, I won't get around to, uh, to friending you. My friend, people who give me messages first, I don't have a lot of time these days. So that being said, all good here. Come join us. It's getting more and more fun. From Rithia, namaste. See you next week. <laughs>